Hey all, this is Alan with Bothell STEM Coach and today we are going to continue on with some AP Physics uh, 1 questions and we're focusing on the momentum topic right now. Um, so I encourage you to pause the video, try to do the problem on your own and come back after you've attempted the problem. Alright, so I have a small block of mass M is released at rest from the top of a curved frictionless ramp as shown above. The block slides down the ramp is moving with a speed 3 v naught when it collides with a larger black block of mass m, 1.5 m at rest at the bottom of the incline. The larger block moves to the right as it speed not 2 v not immediately after collision. Express your answers in, of the following questions in terms of the given quantities and fundamental constants. Determine the height of the ramp from which the small block was released. Do, do, do. Okay, so when you got to do conservation of momentum and energy in this one, actually, because what's going to happen is this block is going to speed up, oh, moving at oh, it's moving at a speed of three point five v naught. So I'm going to move this one, this here. Okay, so it gained half a v naught during this time, right? So the way we, we, we typically do that is a conservation of energy during this point. Because in this point, because it's frictionless, there's no energy lost between the two. So we would say the initial energy, which was um, one half, I mean, the, the total energy up here initially is it has potential energy, has an MGH, big M, GH. And it has a one half m v squared, which would be three v naught. So this is its kinetic energy, and this is its potential energy. Now all of that potential energy gets converted into kinetic energy, one half m v squared, where v is sort of the oh actually down here it's um, three point five v naught squared, right? So and then I want to I'm trying to solve for h. This, this will tell me what the height is because I know like the energy quantities that it, the kinetic energy it, it, it started and ended with. So if I'm going to divide by m and then I will bring it over to here and then divide by g. So gh one half 3.5 v naught squared minus one half 3 v naught squared and then I'm going to divide by g. So h is equal to 1 over 2g. I can factor that 1 half out. Um, this I can do. 3.5 squared is 12.25. Um, uh, and then 3 squared is 9. So that's 3. The difference, 12.25 v naught squared minus 9 v naught squared is 3.25 v naught squared. Uh, sorry, um, I already squared it, so it's just v not squared. And then dividing the what three point two five divided by two is uh one point six two five, so it's one point six two five v not squared over g. Just to simplify, I'm just simplifying this a little bit. Okay. B. Determine the speed of the bo small block after the collision. Well. The momentum has to be conserved before and after the collision. So initially, the the momentum before uh, the collision is just this is the only thing that has momentum. It has mv, which is m times three point five v naught, and that has to equal the momentum after. Right. So after it collides, this thing has some momentum. We'll call v m the the momentum of this block. The other block has 1.5 m times its velocity, which was 2 v naught, right? And my goal is to say, well, these two momentums are the same. So I would have m 3.5 m v naught equals m v m plus 3 m v naught, 1.5 times 2. I bring this over here, I would get our uh, these are all the same m, so I can actually cancel the m's. So I would get 0.5 v naught by subtracting the 3 v naught over here is equal to v m. So the block moves to the right with uh, 0.5 v naught. 
The larger block slides the distance d before coming to rest. Determine the value of the coefficient of kinetic friction between the larger block and the surface on which it slides. Okay, so that means um, for c, it's coming to rest at a distance. So it's sort of, I have to figure out the acceleration. Well, <clears throat> if, I, if I do a free body diagram on this guy, this um, he's got a force downward of 1.5 mg. He's got a normal force. And then he says a frictional force acting on him, and that's it, right? As he's sliding along here. Now the frictional force is equal to mu times the normal force. Mu normal force is equal to this one because it's not accelerating in the vertical direction. So this is mu times 1.5 mg, right? And this force of friction has to equal 1.5 m times a mass times acceleration. Net force in the x direction uh, equals ma. So the, the 1.5 m actually cancels for both sides. So I have mu g is equal to acceleration. Okay. I need to figure out what the acceleration is though. And the acceleration I can tell by based on how far it traveled. Right. And I have to use a kinematic equation. The kinematic, there's two equations that relate position, distance, or, or um, it's this one, but remember why we don't like this one is uh, this has time in it, and I don't know how long it slid for, not directly. So the other equation is this one. Now, if we're saying to the right is positive, this is the final velocity. Uh, the final velocity when it comes to rest is zero, so that's zero. The initial velocity is uh, 2 v naught 2 a and its displacement is d right so um, what we get is um, what am I trying to solve I'm trying to solve for a if I know a then I can solve for mu because mu is equal to a over g right so if I know a I can figure out what mu is so I want to solve for a. Let's uh, bring this over to here. So negative 2ad is equal to 4 v naught squared, because I squared this, I square both of these. Divide by 2, that becomes 2 v naught squared. So a is equal to negative v naught squared over d, which then I can put into here. Mu is equal to negative v naught squared over gd. Now, if these are all positive quantities, I probably need to make this a plus because it, it would technically be negative. But I, I really only want the acceleration to be a positive quantity when I because when I set up this equation, a was positive. So this is a negative a, which means it's going to the left. Uh, so I just changed the sign to positive. And you can do that. I mean, I know accelerate the the mu ought to be a positive quantity. So okay, <clears throat> so that's that. Indicate whether the collision between two blocks is elastic or inelastic. Now remember what we talked about in the last free response question, if you did it, is that the difference between the two is whether or not the energy before the collision equals the energy after the collision. Well, the energy before the collision is 1 half, 3.5, oops. Initially, it just has some kinetic energy for just from this block. 1 half one, uh, m times 3.5 oops. Uh, v naught squared. That's its kinetic energy before. That's the kinetic energy before. And the kinetic energy after is, well, both of these have kinetic energy after. This block has 1 half m, and his velocity we decided was a half of v naught. And the other block is 1 half 1 1.5 m, and his velocity is 2 v naught squared. And we want to compare to see if these two are equal or not. Right? So I'm going to leave the 1 half m alone. So this is 1 half m. This is 0.25 v naught squared plus 1 half m times 4 v naught squared times 1.5 that's 6 v naught squared. And when I put these together I get 1 half m 6.25 v naught squared. Okay. And this one, uh, when I solve this, I square the 3.5, I get 1 half m times 
uh, 3.5 squared is like 12.25 V naught squared. So you see, these are not equal, right? So it's an inelastic collision because some energy was lost. So you started out with more energy and then it ended up with less energy. Okay. All right. Hope you found that helpful. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching the video guys. Please leave a comment, like, or subscribe below to catch up more of the content and see any links below. I offer free homework help on uh, Twitch and Discord. See you guys in the next video.